Good morning, Rose Red Homestead. And today's video is going to accomplish two things. Uh, first of all, we're going to, I'm going to give you an update on the steam canner. And then second of all, we're going to be doing pineapple chili salsa at the request of one of our viewers. And so we're working down our list of requests while at the same time working with the steam canner. Now, I want to give an update on the steam canner. First thing is, I have taken it off of our Amazon site until some things get resolved. So I want to tell you what happened when I did the, um, uh, the test batch um, with four quarts of water on the inside. What that test batch was supposed to do was to help you see how far up the needle goes into your green zone. You can use that as your benchmark for all future batches. And what you are supposed to do is to bring the water, there are three quarts of water in the bottom of the canner, and then you turn it on high until it, the needle moves up and stops in the green zone. Well, that never happened. The needle never got into the green zone. Now, I, scientifically, I understand what happens on the inside of a steam canner. The, the, water begins to boil at whatever the boiling temperature is for your elevation and there's no way that you can increase that boiling temperature you can boil all day long and it's just going to stay right there well our boiling temperature is 203 degrees sea level is 212 i imagine that this would work at 212 but this one did not work for us it never got into the green zone and yet the canner was issuing steam. Now, I wrongly stated um, at, at the unboxing of this canner that the steam would be coming out of these two holes, and it does not. The steam comes out from under the lid, and in reading the instruction book, that that's what it says it's supposed to do. It issues from under the lid. Well, there are a couple of things that I found fault with on that uh, for my taste. However, I kept it on high the entire time trying to get that needle to move up. When doing a real batch like we're going to do today, once it gets up to that full head of steam and up to temperature, then you turn it down because it doesn't need to be on high. Um, the, we, don't, we want to prevent the water from all boiling the canner dry. That would damage the canner. So, because I understand the scientific principle, I have a workaround for this. I just use this little hand thermometer, which is very accurate, and I started taking the temperature. After 40 minutes, I started taking the temperatures just by, and the probe is right here on this tip end. So I just stuck this, this thermometer right down there, and it, whoa, and it registered um, it registered 203.4 over and over and over again. And so I know that I was at the maximum temperature that the inside of this canner was going to achieve. And so at that point in time, I could start the processing time and turn the heat down a little bit, continuing to monitor to be sure. So this is a workaround to this. I found this a little difficult to read. <clears throat> the only... The only burner that works on um, for me for this large of a pot is our single large burner, and it is at the very back of my um, stovetop. So I have to stand on my toes, lean over in order to see it. Meanwhile, steam is coming out from underneath the lid all the way around. And so I didn't like having to lean up and over in order to look down and read that. Um, the needle, if where it was supposed to be was if we call that 12 o'clock, and then on this side was the green, the needle was at about 10 o'clock. So it never even got close to getting in the green zone, in any one of the green zones, not just the, the green zone for our band. Ours is the orange band on this. So I found that disappointing. The good news is that it works on my induction cooktop, so I was thrilled about that. And I still really like this canner, but until I get some things resolved with customer service, I'm not going to put it in our Amazon store because many of you will be counting on this little doodah to work. And for us, it did not work, even though I can work around it. Now, 
The thing that has me a bit concerned is that I contacted customer service um, for two straight days. Nothing. I left a message. There was no way to get in touch with a real person. I left two messages and I have not heard anything. So I'm going to give them until the end of next week. I understand if they are a small business because so are we. And sometimes your personal life, interf life interferes with what you would really like to do in terms of customer response. But this is made by the IVKP, which is Victorio. I have a Victorio strainer that I have had for 50 years and it works great, I love it. I feel like Victorio is a good company unless they have changed hands and things have happened. The other thing is that on Amazon, this has hundreds and hundreds of top level reviews. People absolutely love this canner, which is what convinced me to go ahead with it. The other thing that happened that I didn't really like, but I think will only happen when it's on high, is that the lid rattles. Well, the instruction book said to expect that when it's on high, but what happens as the lid rattles and steam escapes is that the steam immediately condenses and drips down on my stove top. And so there was a ring of water all the way around. It's just water, but it was a nuisance. And then you see that our cooktop is right near cabinets. And the steam, when it was issuing from under the lid, it got the back tile soaking wet and dripping. And on this side of the cabinet was all wet. Steam is not good for wood cabinets. So there, I have a couple of issues with it. I think I'm going to be able to make it work. I hope to get some satisfaction about this. This I just may have a faulty one of these and perhaps they will send me a new one to try. But in any case, I'm going to keep the canner and just do the work around. But if I don't get resolution on this, it will not be going up in our Amazon store. Jim and I are very particular about the things that we put in our Amazon store. And we want only the things that we feel really comfortable with using ourselves in that store. So I'm going to put this on the back stove. We're set up to do our pineapple chili salsa. So let's get going. All right, so we are ready to go. All set up. And uh, this recipe comes from the Kentucky Extension Office. So it is a tested recipe. Now, I'm just going to dump the ingredients in. I'm not going to give you the amounts necessarily, but I am putting the link to the recipe in the description. And in fact, when you click click on that link, there it brings up three or four recipes from that extension office, which is really a good deal. All right, so here we go. The first thing is to put in the, the this is um, papaya. And that was four cups. And then we're going to put in two cups of pineapple, and I just use pineapple tidbits in a 20 out can. Then one cup of golden raisins. I have not seen golden raisins for a long time, so it was fun to be reintroduced to those with this recipe. And then um, this is a half a cup of chopped Anaheim chili going in. And if you have ever been burned by the capsaicin in chilies, you know to wear rubber gloves. It took me only once to learn that lesson, and now I work with those chilies with gloves on. And then I'm going to put in two tablespoons of minced green onion, two tablespoons minced cilantro, Two tablespoons of brown sugar. And then I need one cup of bottled lemon juice. And a half a cup of bottled lime juice.
And this is the pineapple juice drained from the can of pineapple tidbits, and I need a half a cup. And that's it. So we're going to stir this around, bring it to a boil, and let it boil for 10 minutes. Okay. It will thicken up just a little bit. While this is happening, I'm going to get the jars ready. This makes six half pint jars. So I'll, I'm going to get eight ready just in case and we'll see what happens. I just took this off the heat. It had boiled for 10 minutes and it has thickened up, as you can see. Now, I felt like some of the fruit pieces were a little bit too large. So while it was boiling, I got some kitchen scissors and just snipped some of the fruit right in half so that it is more salsa-like size. The jars are in the sink in hot, hot water. So we're gonna go ahead and fill them. I have water heating in the canner. Air bubbles. Lids. and bands. All right, come on over and let's put them in the canner. If you are hearing a pulsing sound, it is my induction range. It's electromagnetic, and so it pulses off and on depending on how high the heat setting is. Even though the instructions say to put it to the back so you can see this better, I'm not going to be paying any attention to this because it's not working. Um, so I put the holes in the front so I can more easily check the temperature. All right, now I'm going to turn the heat up, bring it up very high until we have a good amount of steam coming out from under the lid. And when this reaches 203, and then um, we'll start our timing and we can turn it down. It does not have to be on super high the entire cook time. We don't want the water to boil out. Um, processing time is 15 minutes by the recipe, but because this is the same as water bath canning and my elevation is 5,000 feet, I know that I need to add 10 minutes. So once it gets up to, uh, the this, this steam gets to the right temperature, then we will um, process it for 25 minutes. So we're going to bring you back during the process so you can see the canner in action and you can tell what it is that I'm going to do as a workaround for this which doesn't work. So here's the canner in action. Uh, you can see a lot of steam is coming up right now and it's not dripping down on my stovetop the way it was before <clears throat> during the test that I did yesterday. So let's take the temperature. 203.9, that's as high as it's going to get. It's not going to get any higher than that. The steam is, is really good. And so we're going to go ahead and start the timing. Hey Siri, set timer for 25 minutes. So I am going to then turn it down a little bit. We don't need such a high boil or so much steam, but you can see how wet this is back here from the steam that is escaping. Fortunately, none is getting on this wall of my cabinet the way it was the other day, but it is just getting this soaking wet. So be mindful of that if you decide to use this canner. <clears throat> Perhaps you have a better setup to where it's not right up against a wall. And of course, then you can probably jiggle the lid around and make the steam come out a different spot if you wanted to. In fact, I just did. Now it's coming out to the front. <clears throat> the timer just went off, so these have been processing for 25 minutes. I checked the temperature all the way through. It was right at 203 the entire time. Right now it's 203. 
Point nine. It's been holding the entire time, so I know that's a quick workaround. In fact, I probably would even do that anyway if this little gizmo was working. So um, I I prefer things that I know that I can count on. So anyway, I'm going to re I'm going to take off the turn off the heat, take off the lid, and there's. There's a bit of water on the stove top, not enough to even worry about. And I'm going to move it over here. So we can let these sit for a few minutes, but I'm just going to go ahead and take them out right now. This looks beautiful. And Jim and I both had a little taste of what was left in the pot. And Jim, tell him what you think of it. It's pretty good. Yeah, he thought it was really good. Nice and tangy. Very tangy. Not too hot? No, not too hot. So what I was thinking is that this would be a really great salsa to uh, do a baked chicken. Just pour that salsa all over the chicken and bake it with that tangy, fruity taste. I think it would just be fantastic. So these will be a wonderful addition to our uh, food storage and something that's just a little bit different. So in terms of the canner, um, I am going to keep it. I'm still not going to put it in the Amazon store unless we get resolution from um, my attempts to contact customer service. But I'm, going to, I'm happy with it otherwise, very happy with it otherwise. And I especially like the idea that I can use it for steam canning or water bath canning or a stock pot. I'm going to be doing a great big pot of beets. I've ordered 25 pounds of beets. This is the pot that I will use to boil the beets to get the skins off. Oh, there went one. So they're starting to pop right now. So thank you for being with us. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you try it. And we will see you at our next video.